Timing is everything. I feel like that phrase has so many meanings on so many different levels. And at this time, I should be giving you a speaker review as part of the current group test that I'm running. But the next speakers in the group test need some extra running time. So I thought I would use my time wisely and talk to you about a topic that I'm particularly passionate about. And it's a topic for both hi-fi and home cinema performance, and that is room acoustics and room acoustics treatments. Part of me feels like we should probably leave the acoustics advice to the professionals, and I'm definitely not a professional, I'm not an acoustician, but I have installed a lot of acoustic treatment in my own listening room, and I've got a reasonable amount of experience based on that. So I thought I would share some of this with you. And while we're talking about timing, it just so happens that I've just taken delivery of what is a prototype acoustic treatment from GRK Acoustics that I'm going to be playing with. So again, timing is everything. <laughs> so many levels. Little bit of history. The first time I heard a hi-fi system playing in an acoustically treated listening room was actually at What Hi-Fi when they were based at Teddington Studios. And Teddington Studios is quite a famous site based in London. And What Hi-Fi had several dedicated listening rooms there that were professionally acoustically treated. So professionally done that they even had plaques on the walls that showed how the room behaved from a sound and acoustic point of view and at the time I didn't actually understand what that plaque meant but I kind of acknowledged that the plaque was there and that definitely stayed with me and those listening rooms made a real impression on me and the reason being the first thing you notice when you walk into that listening room was the tranquility of it and by that I mean the way it was isolating the you know all the outside sounds so there was actually no outside or external sound coming through but more interesting was how the hi-fi systems were played in there they also had a level of tranquility about them that really impressed me it was like the sound was emanating from the speakers and then vanishing really quite quickly which meant there was just this level of clarity and composure to the hi-fi systems played in these listening rooms that i'd never heard before and in contrast to my own listening room <laughs> the sound was so much more relaxed and tranquil. Back in my listening room, everything sounded kind of edgy and there was a bit of a shoutiness and I could hear there was just something going on in my listening room. I only had to clap and I could hear that clap kind of ring and resonate. And what's interesting about that is that I had followed all the typical audiophile advice for a listening room. I had carpet on the floor, big heavy material sofas, not leather, material based sofas, loads of cushions, big heavy curtains. So I tried to put as many soft furnishings in my listening room as I could, but I could still hear this wasn't enough, you know, this, there was still more going on or there was definitely much more improvement that I could make. If we fast forward several years, I am now just a little bit invested in acoustic treatment. And for those of you who are new to the channel, my listening room is pitch black because it's a cinema room. I have a screen that drops down for a projector. It's not necessarily the nicest thing to have on camera, but when it comes to projector picture quality, having the back cave room is definitely the best. But let's start with what is really obvious in my listening room. On the front wall is the big mural of diffusion, which is actually nine GRK Acoustics Gotham diffusion panels. And it's very much debunked to have diffusion on the front wall because diffusion generally works at higher frequencies and speakers play their higher frequencies going forwards. So it kind of doesn't really make any sense to have a product that diffuses high frequencies behind the speakers. And I will openly admit, I installed the Gotham treatments in my room more for visual reasons than anything else. I think they look really nice, it's really quite cool, and it really obviously breaks up the very black listening room. But in saying that, this room is a home cinema room, so there are speakers at the back of the room that are firing forwards. So having diffusion on the front wall, with the other treatments that you can see, helps to break up the front wall, helps to really try and remove the front wall from the acoustic equation. And interestingly, when I put the diffusion panels in there, even for stereo, I definitely heard a difference in the sound quality, and this could be for quite a few reasons. But what I would say is, if you're just starting out, it's very tempting to put diffusion in between the speakers, but I do think there are much better ways to invest your money for a much bigger performance improvement Maybe, and I definitely don't want to put anybody off putting diffusion there, but maybe come back to that later. Where most acousticians seem to suggest that we start is with bass traps. And you can see I have GRK Acoustics Sophic traps. And the reason it's advised to treat bass in the corners of the room is because generally this is an area of high pressure, especially the corners of the room behind 
where the speakers are. And sometimes the bass pressure can be so high in the corners of the room that it can actually become audible. You can actually hear bass building up in rooms. I'm sure some of you must have experienced that at some point in the past. But outside of that, what's actually happening is as the bass is created by the speaker, bass below 80 hertz is omnidirectional. So yes, there's bass moving forwards from the speaker that really we want to hear, but bass also moves backwards from the speaker as well. It hits the corner of the room, it hits the boundaries of the room and then reflects and starts coming back forwards again. And by the time that bass hits your ear, alongside the forward firing bass that we are supposed to hear, it either joins that bass either in phase or out of phase. If it's in phase, it will boost the bass. If it's out of phase, it will cancel the bass. And this is why quite often in listening rooms, bass can sound really very uneven or worse it can sound very boomy and very one note bass orientated and this can be an extremely difficult thing to overcome especially in smaller listening rooms and what's most interesting about this phenomena is that this is happening in every single listening room but it happens different as you move around the room. I'm sure everybody has experienced this. So if you put yourself more towards the middle of the room, well, you'll notice there is a lot less bass there. Start contrast, go towards the back of the room, you'll know that there is a lot more bass there. And this is to do with how, the, again, the bass is building up in different parts of the room. And this is definitely something to be mindful of the next time you go to a hi-fi show, when they start up again, hopefully soon, when you're trying to find a good seat to have a listen for a demo, <laughs> if you're sitting near the middle, sitting near the edges of the room, take that into account in terms of the bass that you are hearing. So acoustically treating the corners of the room can be a very effective way of reducing all of these problems. Too much bass, bass building up, and helping to reduce some of the bass problems we have when sound moves around the room and cancels out the original direct sound that we are supposed to hear from the speakers. But it's important to remember that there are lots of corners in a room. Pretty much whenever one wall or floor or ceiling surface meets another, creates a corner. So essentially there are a lot of corners in a room and a lot of points of high pressure that we can apply acoustic treatment to. But I fully appreciate something like the GRK soffit trap is a big thing, not necessarily visually the nicest and may be very difficult to get the WAF. So instead, GRK Acoustics manufacture a product called a Tri-Trap, which is a more discreet corner acoustic treatment. And I actually started with four of these. I'm gonna throw up some photos for my listening room for how it started many, many years ago. This is when I first tried to fully acoustically treat the room and you can see more clearly, I feel like, because everything's light, some of how I installed the panels. Now, the room is very different to this now, but you can see, I think, some interesting things, especially how I used to have the rear wall with the four tri-traps going from the floor to the ceiling. And then in between that was other acoustic treatments in some funky colors that my partner picked. She picked those colors before you <laughs> give me a hard time. And I replaced the tri-traps with the soffit traps because the soffit traps are much larger, they are much thicker, and therefore they have a significantly improved performance. So they are a better acoustic treatment compared to the tri-traps. So much more bang for buck, but they are much bigger. And because I already owned four tri-traps, I didn't want to waste them. So what I actually did, I installed them in the ceiling. So they cover the ceiling and wall corners. I've actually got two on one side, one on another, and one in the front corners on the front wall, which is very, very difficult to see again because everything's covered in black, but it's all up there. Now, this is very OTT, you know, very taking it to extremes, but like I mentioned, I already owned them, so it made sense to get use out of them. I feel like the most talked about area of acoustic treatments is reflections and maybe treating reflection points, and quite often that is called treating first reflections. And this is quite often suggested to be done with the mirror trick. And if you don't know what the mirror trick is, I suggest you Google it. I'm pretty sure GRK have made a video about this and I'll link it in the video description down below. It's basically using a mirror to try and find a direct line of sight from the tweeter of a speaker to the boundaries of the wall. Do bear in mind, there's not just side wall boundaries, you have floor boundaries, you have ceiling boundaries and rear wall boundaries. And what's interesting about this whole concept, the whole concept of reflections in a room is that it makes pure logical sense. A hi-fi speaker spreads its sound, doesn't it? It doesn't fire it in a straight line, it spreads its sound. So while the speaker is playing music directly to you, it's also spreading its sound as well. So the sound that it spreads travels 
off of or away to the sides or up in the ceiling to the floor, it hits a boundary and comes back to you as the listener. And what actually happens is because that distance is greater than the distance from the speaker directly to you, this reflected sound arrives to you late. What then has to happen is your brain has to decipher the difference between the direct sound and the reflected sound. And their brains are really good at it. And I think, you know, we're all probably fairly trained listeners, aren't we? People that watch this channel. So our brains are really very good at deciphering the difference between the reflected sound, which is arriving late, and the direct sound from the speaker. But the problem happens is when we think about the complexity of this. So this is just one sound hitting one boundary from one speaker. So we think two speakers, firing sound <laughs> like this, there are reflections happening all over the room. Sounds hitting the floor, sounds hitting the walls, sound is hitting the ceiling, sound is hitting the other speaker, sound is hitting all your furniture, your hi-fi rack, and sound is literally pinging all around the room, it's hitting the walls behind you. So what's actually happening is you're listening to the direct sound, plus a, a concophony, I think that's the right word, of all manner of reflected sounds, all different time delays. And your brain is having to work out again what is the direct sound and what is the reflected sound? And our brains are fantastic at it, but they're not perfect. So what actually is supposed to happen is all the delayed sounds are supposed to create a sound stage that is fuzzy, that is blurry, and we start to lose clarity, we start to lose an overall sound stage dimensionality and other things. So the theory of treating first reflection points or reflection points in a room is to try and stop this happening, is to try and stop the amount of reflections that are pinging around in the room and to make it easier for us as listeners to concentrate on the direct sound. You can see in my listening room, I installed two GIK Acoustics 244 acoustic panels. So these are about four inches thick absorptive panels. And I'll have two of them next to each other because in my mind, you know, speakers don't fire a laser beam of sound, they fire an arc of sound. So while the mirror trick might you know, isolate the tweeter, really there's mid-range frequencies and all sorts of firing at that wall that are being reflected back. So in my mind, we, we don't want to treat like a, a postage stamp size, we want to treat a larger area because there are quite large sound waves hitting that boundary. So that was my mindset in terms of having quite a large area covered. And I have installed the exact same thing on both sidewalls. And actually below the sidewalls, there is another 244 panel that is actually membrane based. So it means it's really designed to absorb bass only because the membrane is on the front and that is reflective at higher frequencies. But these are again, extra panels that I had because you know I've made so many changes over the years. So I'm just really putting these to good use. You can also see that I took the exact same approach with my ceiling and I installed three GRK Acoustics 242 panels. Again, trying to cover a large area of the ceiling above the speakers. And the 242 panels are two inches thick. Now I will openly admit, I actually did this wrong. I got this wrong. I should have installed much thicker panels on the ceiling. And I'm sure a lot of you are thinking, wow, that's a lot of acoustic treatment to have in a listening room. And yeah, it very much is. And I'm sure a lot of you are thinking, well, that's a lot of absorption acoustic panels to have in a listening room. Surely Terry is killing the sound of his room. And killing the sound of the room is a phrase that I kind of love and loathe in equal measure because it's a phrase designed to scare people. Wow, it's killing the sound of his room. But there's no real explanation in that phrase of what it actually means. And killing the sound of the room, interestingly, it is not an audio file term. It's actually a a thing that can be measured and quantified. Because when you add absorption acoustic treatments to a room, what is happening is you are reducing the reflections that's happening in the room. And those reflections can be measured using a term, or measured in, in lots of different ways, but quite often deemed under a term of what's called RT60, which is a measurement of the reverb time of a room, the reflection time of a room. And RT60 is a measurement whereby sound reduces in by 60 decibels and that can be measured in a time. And in an ideal world, what would happen, you would add acoustic treatment absorption to a listening room and the reverb, the RT60 time would lower or reduce in a linear fashion. But that's not what always happens. Thinking about sound waves, you know, high frequencies come out of a tweeter, one inch dome tweeter, very, very small driver. And then we have bass waves coming out of whacking great big 10 inch, 12 inch, 15, 18 inch bass drivers. So the bass waves, the sound waves and the pressure 
of bass and even mid-range, the waves are much larger, the pressure is much higher than the delicate sound that comes out of the tweeter. If we line our listening room with very thin foam or egg cartons, what is actually happening is we are reducing the reverb really only for high frequencies and we're not reducing the reverb for mid-range and low frequencies. And what happens then is that creates a very uneven sounding acoustic condition in a room. And that really is what killing the sound of the room actually is. It's not adding acoustic treatment, it's the uneven absorption within a room. So it's not the absorption, it's the uneven effect. That's really important, I think, to define. And what we really want in an ideal situation would be the opposite effect. So when we add acoustic treatment to a room, really we want it to be very effective at lower and mid-range frequencies and still effective at higher frequencies, but maybe less effective. And if you look at the GRK Acoustics latest, their new panel, especially the Alpha series and such that you can see, behind me, back there, they actually have like a decorative front faceplate to them, which looks really nice. They come in all different patterns and colors and stuff. So they're very visual, but at the same time, they are scattering the very highest frequencies while still absorbing the mid-range and the bass frequencies. High frequencies to a point, but they're absorbing more of the mid-range and the bass. The reason being, you could have more of these acoustic panels in your room to be more effective where it's needed at mid-range and bass frequencies, and then they are less absorptive at higher frequencies so that the room is more even in terms of how the sound is being absorbed, or more even in terms of the rate of decay. Going back to my listening room, this is a view that not many of you would have seen before. This is the back of my listening room. And you can see there are, guess what? Lots more acoustic treatments. I have four more GRK soffit traps that run from the floor to the ceiling. Again, they are in the corners of the room. And to try and be more effective and absorb more of the unwanted bass that might reflect off of my back wall, I have installed four GRK Acoustics Monster Bass Traps. And these are about seven-ish inches thick. In between all of them, I have two quadratic diffusers from GRK called the Q7D. So as you can see, in a way similar to my front wall, I've tried to remove acoustically the rear wall from the equation because I actually feel like the rear wall in my listening room could be really quite harmful and damaging to the sound quality that I would get because the rear wall is actually quite a few feet back from where I sit. So if you think about what we spoke about for time delay, as the sound would hit that rear wall and come back to me as the listener, there would be quite a large time delay because of the increased distance. And quickly to talk about diffusion and how it differs from absorption. Diffusion is designed to treat room reflections exactly the same, but the main difference is diffusion doesn't lower the room's reverb time like absorption does. So you might think you can have diffusion everywhere, but there are massive stipulations with it. Firstly, it's very limited in bandwidth. The GRK Q7D is effective from 600 hertz to seven kilohertz, which is actually quite a broad range for a diffuser, but it's also seven plus inches deep. The equivalent sized absorption panel from GRK Acoustics is their Monster Trap, which is effective from 60 hertz to 10 kilohertz, hence why these are called broadband treatments. You also need to be a distance away from the diffusion panel for them to be effective at their full frequency range. And there is a mathematical calculation that you can do to work this out. Their cost is higher because their manufacturing is much more complex. But diffusion also has the psychoacoustic effect of making you feel like the boundaries of the room is not there, which is a very appealing side to diffusion, which is very appealing obviously for hi-fi and home cinema performance. But you do have to be careful because Diffusion on its own is definitely not the answer and it can actually make things sound really quite weird. I remember at a hi-fi show a couple of years ago, there was one room of a system being played in there which was literally all hard surfaces. Quite a, a rectangular sized room and there was diffusion literally all down the sides of the room. And it's the sound of that hi-fi system in there was really quite bad because of the acoustics. And if you listen to the hi-fi system stood in between the two diffusion panels, it sounded particularly weird. There must've been all sorts of weird comb filtering and all sorts going on. So it's like all of these things, it's a fantastic tool to use, but it's about using the right tool in the right position for the right reasons. Coming back to my listening room for a second, I'm sure you're thinking, wow, that's a hell of a lot of acoustic treatment in a listening room. And <laughs> that is not nearly all of it. I have other acoustic treatment on the sidewalls, which difficult to get on camera on the sidewalls. And I also have quite a lot of other acoustic treatments 
on the ceiling. I'm hoping I can get these in the shop because this is, I don't know if you'll be able to see this very well or not, but that is a GRK Acoustics Versi Fuser, which is a diffusion panel that's made from a polystyrene type of material. And the great thing, I'm gonna put that down. The great thing about a product like that, made of polystyrene, is the fact that it's really light. So I've actually got six of those on my ceiling what I've actually done is covered them in a black material to make them obviously invisible in the black room. And then I've stuck them to my ceiling just with double-sided adhesive Velcro. And those have been up on my ceiling for years. So that's the benefit of them being really light. But one of the snags of a product like this being made from a, a polystyrene type material is that it's really difficult to get a nice finish on them. And these particular ones have had quite a hard life because I have two of these that the main door that comes in and out of the room when the door's closed, I hang these panels on the door. They're nice and light, easy to hang on there. When the door's open, obviously these live on the floor. So they're basically in use for serious listening, reviewing, and they're easy to move when <laughs> other things are happening in the room. But what does the room actually sound like? Well, it's really interesting that most people, especially people from the industry, when they've come here to bring different speakers for reviews, etc., straight away they comment on the room. And it's interesting because I think the room has, has got, I suppose, a minimal amount of its own sound. And that, that was my goal really with it. It was like, I really appreciated that hi-fi demo that I had all those years ago. And I was trying to create something similar to that in a sense of, you know, blocking out external sound, kind of, you know, maybe blocking me in, locking me into a sound and allow me to focus on what's going on with the system, maybe more so than what's going on with the room. What's really interesting is when people come in that room and we sit and we talk, it is a great room for having a conversation. You can have a really clear conversation in there because I feel like your brain's working less hard on trying to process all the reflected sound and you can just literally focus on the direct sound coming from the person. That's definitely one of the benefit, but quite a few people that have listened to my hi-fi system or hi-fi systems that I've had in that room, it does take them a little bit of getting used to. It is an adjustment period because it is different. It is a different type of sounding room. You listen to it, you adjust to it, you adapt to it. And then I feel like people probably do appreciate the benefits of it. And I think largely the reason I've gone to such extremes is because the room is a smaller room and trying to get really good sound, really big, loud, dynamic sound, especially for home cinema in a small room is a real challenge and definitely all the acoustic treatment helps to soak up all the sound from a Dolby Atmos system. You can run subwoofers really hard and uh, the sound stays really, really tight, even at very loud volume. So that is the pros of it. I took an approach of really trying to create a very reflective free zone. That was what I was kind of looking for initially. But what's been really interesting was initially I had a lot of absorption in the room, gradually adding more diffusion to the room and hearing the benefits of it is really very interesting. And that is exactly why I have these prototype products here from GRK Acoustics, because you know what I want to explore this more and see if I can't use you know, a combination of absorption and diffusion to try and improve the sound of my room even more. Because it is fascinating, acoustics and room acoustics is so fascinating. And I appreciate not everybody's in a position to be able to do it because of domestic situations and stuff like that. But if you can, if you are in a position so maybe take an acoustic approach to your room. You know, the benefits are, you know, night and day, black and white. So it's definitely worth considering if you can. If you can't, I suppose there are other options to look at and I will be making videos about that very soon. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Appreciate it. it's been a long one. Maybe there's some inspiration in it for some people. You know, maybe others will think I'm absolutely nuts, bonkers, crazy, but you can't uh, criticize me for the dedication to the course. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found it useful and helpful. If you did, smash the thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel if you're new here, and uh, hopefully see you again soon. Take care, bye. bye.